It's long been thought that Mars was once habitable, or at the very least had liquid water on its surface. Today on ScienceGet, we're going to be talking about a new study that is looking into erosion on Mars's surface, and what that could mean for tracking the planet's history of habitability. A new study by a geologist from Monash University may hold the key to figuring out how Mars's climate has evolved throughout its history. And the key is a brand new technique that may help scientists understand how erosion has worked on the red planet's surface since it was formed 4.6 billion years ago. Today, the majority of Mars's erosion is caused by wind and dust storms. Like Earth, Mars does have a sedimentary cycle, which is the process where surface rocks are slowly eroded into soil, or in Mars's case, regolith. But unlike Earth, Mars Mars does not have abundant liquid water on its surface or plate tectonics to assist in that process. But according to this new study, that wasn't always so. As we've explained in past videos, Earth is constantly recycling its sediments through the process of subduction. There are even remnants of prehistoric continents floating deep within the Earth. This isn't the case on Mars, obviously. Though, given the bombshell announcement that Mars's interior structure was mapped, which we covered in a video that is linked in the description, and the recent recording of a Mars quake that hit 5 on the Richter scale, it does appear that Mars could still be somewhat volcanically active. Before we continue with the video today, I just want you all to know that we've created a Discord for ScienceGet, where you can interact with other members of the ScienceGet community, suggest topics for upcoming shows, and more. Check it out by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment for this video. But with this new study, the findings do suggest that erosion was once much more prominent, and there are some strong indicators that liquid water was more than likely the driving force behind that erosion in Mars's distant past. The most intriguing thing about this study, though, is that its implications seem to suggest that liquid water did indeed contribute to those higher rates of erosion. It probably shouldn't be a surprise that scientists want to understand why Mars went from being fairly Earth-like to the desolate wasteland it is now. And while it isn't exactly a widely accepted theory, there are some scientists who think that life on Earth could have been seeded by Mars in the distant past through the process of panspermia. It's probably not news to you that Martian meteorites have made their way to our planet, and there was a lot of speculation surrounding curious-looking artifacts in a few different Mars meteorites recovered here on Earth. Those artifacts were formations that looked quite a bit like microscopic life forms. The scientific consensus on those artifacts in those meteorites is that they were likely formed upon entering our atmosphere, i.e. formed under extreme heat. But this hasn't eliminated the possibility that life once existed on the red planet. After all, since we've uncovered evidence that liquid water once flowed in abundance on its surface, then life is a strong possibility. Where there's water, there's life, right? The new study, led by Dr. Andrew Gunn, who's from the Monash University School of Earth, Atmosphere, and Environment, relied on multiple data sets to approximate how much sand was deposited in Martian craters. This allowed the researchers involved with the study to figure out how well every type of Martian rock erodes. I know that geology can seem like a boring science to some, but that statement alone proves that geology is awesome. The geological record here on Earth is immensely important to understanding how our planet has evolved throughout its 4.5 billion year lifespan. Dr. Gunn says that, if we want to know if there was life on Mars, we need to understand the sedimentary rock record. Our study determines the timing and rates of sediment erosion and accumulation over Mars's geological history in a completely novel way, and for the first time, quantifies a measure of the erodibility of each of the types of rocks we see on Mars's surface. It is significant because we show that the abundance of sands blown by wind into craters on Mars's surface can be linked to the climate history of the planet, unlocking a a new way to understand when in geologic time Mars may have been habitable. So basically, if we can use this new technique pioneered by Dr. Gunn and his fellow researchers, then we'll be able to establish a geological record on Mars. And somewhere in that record is the answer to the mystery of whether or not Mars was once habitable. And if we can figure out what went wrong with Mars's climate, maybe we can figure out how to make sure the same thing doesn't happen to Earth. But what do you think? 
Do you think the search for past life on Mars or the search for life in general is pointless? Or do you think it's essential to understanding our place in the universe? Let me know down below. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. Super thanks to get your name in the credits of the next video and share this video with someone who loves space and Mars. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.